Okay, so I'm not going to wait. I'm going to start. Uh, so, uh, how's your homework three? Anyone finish that? I didn't finish it yet. Oh, one. cool, cool. Yes, I see. Wow, well, I see one finish, uh, one almost. And uh, so, do you think it's difficult or not? How long did it, it, did it take? Can you hear me? Sorry. Hear me? Okay. Okay. Yes, Professor. Uh, right now. Okay. Gotcha. So, um, two hours. Yeah, that that is very very. Uh, Excellent. I mean, if you ask me to to do homework to do homework three, probably it will take me somewhere around forty minutes. And, and for you, it only takes you like two hours, and it's, it's really fast. I mean, uh, so so um, great. Um, so and also, I see a couple of students are, are applying the uh, the uh, extra credit. I mean, I mean, so that's even better than what I expected. So when you are doing the uh, the hip sort, uh, you will definitely uh, meet a lot of difficulties. Uh, so just so if you remember, uh, last time I said that in, in hip sort there are three easy functions and two medium level functions and one difficult function for to implement. So uh, even those, even when you're just playing with those three easy functions, it, there is a, uh, so so there is a trap about the index so be careful about it so if you or if you need help just feel free to let me know so so uh, I, I would definitely help you with that and uh, also uh, say uh, for uh, homework for homework three uh, I think um, especially uh, coding sort um, the to, to implement that is not it's, it is not that difficult but but if you want to have a very good understanding of it. Uh, it will definitely take some efforts. Uh, so I hope that uh, you can uh, say, 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 take, take it as a, an opportunity. And then um, so, so to, to say, understand, try, try to understand the algorithm by yourself. Okay, so, and, uh, so starting from, um, so starting from LA, I mean, in the past three weeks, we mainly focus on uh, sorting outcomes. And uh, starting from today, we're going to learn something about data structures. And if you remember that in the first week, in the first week, I said that data structures and, and out, 
algorithms are two topics that we have to learn together. This is, is because that structure is the place, is the container for us to store data. And uh, so, so algorithm is like the, uh, the operations over the data. So uh, we have to study them together because as long as you have some data, you have to store it somewhere. You have to, uh, you have to use a container to store it. So, so before we can apply any operation over them, so we need to, uh, we need to put it, uh, store, store the data in a, in a, in a container. So that's why uh, we uh, so so uh, that structures and and algorithms are have to be learned together. So if you want to uh, take the in another way, so like that structures are are pretty much like the uh, a classroom, and the algorithms is like the act the activities that we perform in the classroom. So so they they have to come together, and so so far we only learned. Uh, we learn. We, we 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 in the first three weeks. We just focus on the uh, the topic of sorting algorithms. Okay. When we are when we are playing sort. Uh, when we are learning the sorting al algorithms, uh, where do we store the data? Well, what kind of container do we use to store the data? What is the type of, what is the data structure that stores the data in sorting algorithms? An array? Yes, great. That's just array, okay? So, so we, the container in, in, in the sorting, when we learn sorting algorithms, the container to store the values are basically array, it's basically array. So, uh, but, when we learn sorting algorithms, we we mainly focus on the sorting part because on, on we mainly focus on the algorithm part because array is very basic and and we have learned it through Java one and Java two, so that's why we don't spend a lot of efforts learning this part. But actually, for for any algorithm, we need to combine it with with uh, the the data structure. Uh, so so starting from today, we're going to spend two weeks on some basic data structures. So. <clears throat> And and the the container that we're going to learn, uh, so so the data container that we're going to learn today are stack and a queue and link the list. So and then we're going to learn the operations over this data uh, over this data structures or over these containers. Uh, so the, the operations that we want to learn over them are basically insertion and deletion. So uh, this is this is our topic for today. Okay, so uh, we're going to learn three data structures and and these three data, stru data structures are not difficult at all. So they are basically the, the simplest type of data structure is basically array and on so so the uh, so, so on top of it, so just just above it are stack, queue, and link the list. So they are they are basically the, the simplest uh, that structure other than array. Uh, so 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 uh, so um, so it's not going to be very difficult. And also the operations that we want to perform over this that structures are also not not difficult at all. So today, I I think that everybody should be able to understand the content very well if you pay attention. Okay, so uh, so here uh, let's talk more about the, the 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 difference between array and the, the data structures that we're going to learn today. Okay, suppose here uh, we have an array. Let's consider array, and here we have an array which has let's say five elements. Uh, so four, two, three, six, seven, and the index are like this. Okay, so suppose now you have a new element and you, uh, you want to add into the array. Let's say you have an element 10, you want to insert it to the, uh, to the end of the array or any place of the array. How can you do that in Java?
how to add, how to insert an element to, or, to an array, basically. Create a new array? Yes. A number. Yes. So to do that, you will have to create an array whose size is six. And then copy all the original, val all the values from the first array to, to the new one. And then copy the, the, the new value to the last space of the, uh, so, so of the uh, newly created array, right? Am I right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, what you can see is that here we just want to insert a single element, one single element in, into an array whose size is five. How many operations do we need to perform? Or how many copy and paste did we perform? Five. Uh, I think six, right? We, we copy this five. I plus this one. Oh, 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 for the second. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Six. Some kind of like that. So, so, and so six operations. And if we want to be general, okay, if, if we got an elements in our array and we want to insert a, a, a single element into this array, so how many operations do we need to perform? How many elements do we need to perform? Uh, how many operations do we need to perform if we have n elements? Six. Sorry? Six. Uh, yes, in this example, it is six, but uh, let's just be general. Let's, let's assume that the array does not have five elements. Let's say and it has n one. elements. Say it again. n plus one. Yes, n plus one, correct. So we need to copy all the original n elements plus the new one. So in total, we need to perform n plus one operations. And we say this complexity, the insertion complexity is O n. Okay? So this is actually pretty bad because we only, because we only want to insert a single element into our array, but the number of, 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 of operations that we need to perform, that we need to perform, grows linearly with the size of the array. Okay, so we can take it in this way. Suppose, um, say, uh, you have a, so, uh, let's say, so far we got Montclair. Let's say Montclair now has 30,000 students. Uh, has 30,000 students. And say, if, one stu if we got a new, a new student, okay, this, so, so then to insert, so if we, if we use the array to arrange these 30,000 30, students. Basically, if we want to add a new student, if uh, uh, Montclair just admits a new student, what, what Montclair needs to do is to go to build a whole, build a whole new campus, a, a campus that is totally new, which can allocate 30,000 and one student. So it will let all the original 30,000 students move to the new campus and also let the the new student to come to the, to the new campus. Would it be just, would it be possible to just uh, extend the original array? I, I mean, this is the problem. That's, that's, that is a good question. The answer is no, we cannot extend an array. We, array does not provide any, any function for us to extend it. So we, we, we can't do that. So, so this is the, so, so, and here you just pinpoint the limitation of our race. When we create, when we are, when we are playing with our race, a big problem is that we always use up all the spaces. Okay, we, we always use up all of the spaces in our, uh, in our array with, without any buffer. So just in case that we, we need one more space, we need to create a, a, a new one in total and from scratch and do all the copy and paste. So that's why the complexity is, is linear to the number of elements in the array, even though we, want, we only want to insert a single element. Make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and actually this way of, so array is basically, a, you can take it as a container. You can take it as an array as a container 
without a buffer. So and in so in real life, if you don't leave leave any buffer for yourself, it's, it's, it is go only going to give you trouble. Suppose say today, let's say uh, ten years from now, you you get married, you just get married, and uh, so so you want to uh, buy buy an apartment. At that time, only you and your spouse. So so probably uh, you say, okay, we only what we only need is just a, a, a single bedroom apartment. A single bedroom apartment, one bedroom and one bathroom. Okay, so, but in, in your mind, you 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 make uh think about something. Okay, what if we got a baby in six months or maybe in 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 one year, two years? Okay, so you want to leave some buffer space. So most of, most couples will not go for one one bedroom and one bathroom. If they go for one bedroom and one bathroom, and if they got a new baby, so what 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 do they need to do? They need to sell this one and buy a new one and also move right and this is going to be very time consuming also it, it, it is going to cost some money for to sell and buy so so to so this is the problem with of with of not having any buffer space for yourself and and what you can do is that okay so at the time of getting married, let's say you want to buy a buy an apartment, you you leave some buffer space. Let's say let's buy a two bedroom apartment, so that when the baby when when we when you got a new baby, you just put you just allocate the spare room for the new baby. So then you don't best you don't need to move, and so your your life remains as before. Right? This is a uh, this is like a container with buffer okay so 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 and today the two, the first the two data structures that we're going to learn are stacks and queue or stack and queue they are basically arrays with buffer space we it's like we still there there are arrays but we don't use we don't always use up all the spaces up uh, in, in the array. It's pretty much like we leave some buffer space for the future. Professor, mm -hmm. um, are arrays always like this, regardless of what language you use? Like in a different language, would you be able to extend the arrays or is no. it? Thick? No, okay. No. So arrays are just like this. In every language, if you just create a basic array, uh, say say uh, no matter it's in C plus plus or Java so it's something like int array okay at the time when you create this array you need to specify the size of it right and after you specify the size of the array so your your the, the compiler or the compiler is going to allocate this large of space in the memory, in the physical memory for the for the array, and that that uh, that space cannot be changed. the The size of that space cannot be changed. So that's the the limitation of array. So the its size is fixed, and we we always use up all the all the uh, say say uh, elements or all, all the spaces inside it with no buffer. Okay, yeah, I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I get it now. Okay. Thank you. No problem. And so today, so the first two data structures that we're going to learn are, are something like this. Still there are arrays, but here we just, let's say most of the, of the time we just use a, a small part of, the, uh, a part of the array and so that we got some buffer space. And then when a new element, when we want to add a new element, it goes to maybe here. Or let's say if we want to remove something from from the array, we just like we, we just kind of like say okay, if this element is gone, we we, we just basically uh, put a separator over here, put a mark over here, saying that okay, so the end of the array is basically here, and so so after this red line, all the spaces are free. So uh, this is what our uh, our stacks and queues are going to look like. And so hopefully this can help you to, to have a better understanding why uh, we learn some, why we need some up, 
that structures other than array because uh, uh, the, the limitation of array is that we, we, we always use up all the spaces with, without any buffer and its size cannot be changed so that just in case that we want to do any insertion and deletion, the time complexity is going to be linear to the size of the array, even though you just want to insert or delete a single element. And this is going to be really time consuming, uh, very expensive if you, if you have a huge array. Take the Montclair uh, University as the as the example. So um, so then uh, you definitely want to avoid creating building a, a whole new campus for a, a single student. Every time if we got an, a, a student, if we if Montclair has to, to build a new campus, so you are not going to be uh, be able to afford the the the, the tuition. <laughs> so and. Uh, and okay, so so here um, uh, the the thing is that we to be smart, we we can we can create an array with some buffer space, and so then those kind of that we call those. Uh, so we we have two types of that structures that maintain buffer space in our array. We call them stack and queue. So uh, first, let's let's uh, have a, a big picture about stack and queue. So far, we learned that stack and queue are are, are dynamic uh, sets that supports efficient insertion and deletion. This is because of the buffer space, because of the existence of the buffer space. So every time if you want to just insert a new element, you just put it in, in put it over in the buffer space. If you want to remove uh, an element, delete an element, it's like you just increase the, the size of the buffer space. And and so so um, so but. Still, there are some differences between the stack and the queues. And let's say what 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 is the difference between them? Okay, so <clears throat> stacks and uh, stacks are something like this. Suppose uh, now you are smart. So uh, you uh, at the time when you are married, uh, at the time when you are married, you buy a a big house, a big house. Let's say with five bedrooms, but only you and your wife is staying in the home in the beginning okay only you and your wife so only this room is occupied so uh, so next time uh, so 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 next time when uh, say say when you get a a, a baby so you let the you want get you you get let's say next time when you got a friend let's say you got a friend a visit you you basically want to want your friend to use the second room if you got friend B, you let to come to visit you. You let friend B sit in a, a stay in the in the third room. So the, the the tricky thing is that so with stack, so whoever comes the uh, whoever comes to the that structure last should leave first. Okay, so it means that I said that so if someone has to leave from the stack, it must be who. So if 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 we want to remove someone from the stack, who is the one to 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 remove? Either A or B. B. Yes, it, B. It has to be B oh. because it, inf, it implements the last in first out policy. Whoever comes to the stack last is is going to get out first. So so here the the the, the limitation of both stack and queue is that at the time when we want to remove something. Okay, when we want to remove something, we cannot arbitrary, we cannot randomly choose which one to remove. No, it has to be a, a very unique one. Uh, so, so, uh, it, so, so for stack, so whoever comes to the to the stack last should go first, should get out first. So B is going to get out first. So this space is free again. So next time, if you have friend C come, friend C is going to reset here, and then friend D, and then if if someone has to leave, it must be D. Got it. In a queue, would you be the first to leave, or would it be A? Ah, uh, you. Okay. Okay. So you can pretty much think, take take a stack as a single ended queue. So the water that comes to or the objects that comes to the stack last will be will get out first. Okay. So well, rice for queue. It, it, it is totally different. If we have a queue, we, we are going to use it in this way, okay? So suppose this is U and this is A and B, C, okay? So, so, so who, now who, 
So Q implements a, a, a uh, first in, first out policy, meaning that whoever comes to, to the house first is going to leave first. So in, now if, if someone has to leave, it must be you. And then next time it is A. So suppose now we have a new friend come to your house. Let's say D and E. We, put, we append them to the end. Uh, so, so we just put them in a, in a free space right after C. And then so if now someone has to leave, it must be, must be, be B and then C and D. So whoever, so, so here you can take, you can take uh, Q as a double-ended Q. So whoever comes into the Q first is, is going to leave first. So that's why we say it, it implements a first in, first out policy. Make sense? Yes. Yes. yes, I actually have a question. So yeah, for, sure. for, for the stack, let's say all five slots are filled, but you replace uh, B, for example, with C. That's the, that's the last one in, but there's still uh, a number in the fifth slot. Would it be the fifth slot or the one that was replaced last? Okay, repeat your question again. Okay. Uh, so for example, for stack, let's say you mm -hmm. have an array of five and okay. all five slots are filled up. Okay. Um, so with like A, B, C, D, E, mm -hmm. um, let's say you were, you, can you replace C with something else? No, you can't. So you cannot change the element inside it. So the only way for you to change C is to remove, remove D, remove E, remove D and remove C and, and then put something new over here. I see. Okay. Insert thank you. something new over here and then something, some other stuff. Okay, you can take it as the, the shelves. Let's say you can, you can take stack. So to better understand stack, you can take it as something like this. Suppose today you go to a, a supermarket and then on the shelf, there are several packs of water. Let's say water, the first pack of water, W1, W2, W3. So if you are the worker at the supermarket and you get a, a new pack of water to put on the shelf, you will definitely put, put it on top of W3, right? You put a new pack of water on top of the existing ones, correct? And correct. then if you, if you are the customer who comes to buy the, the water, uh, some water packs from the, from the supermarket, are you going to take out the last one? This one, the first, uh, sorry, are you going to take out the one at the bottom of the shelf? No, but if you wanted to, you'd have to reorder it, take one yes, from you the have top, to, yeah remove the first the three packs and then get the last one. So you are not going to do that. You're just, just going to get, get W4, which, which comes to the book, book uh, which comes to the shelf last. So, so let's say if you are, again, if you are the worker, at, if, you, if you work at the supermarket and your manager asks you, okay, say, replace the W2 with W5, a new, a new pack of water, a different pack of water, you, so can you just do a simple replacement over here? No, you can't. You need to take out W, you need to take out this two first and then remove, also remove W2 and then put W5 over here and then put the, the uh, W3 and w, W4 on top of W5, right? Do you get me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so you can, so you can think think about think of the uh, the uh, the stack as as the shelves in the supermarket. So and also you can take Q as the waiting room uh, of your doctor. Whoever comes to to the waiting room first is able to see the doctor first. First come, first serve. Yes. So semi. You can take, take it as first come, first serve, or first in, first out. So whoever comes to, in the waiting room first is able to get out of the waiting room first and then go to see the doctor first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is that clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So then let's look at the, the pseudocode for or the detailed structures of stack. We, we, we will start from stack. Stack is basically still, as I said before, both stack and queues are basically an array of an array, okay? 
So, but we now we don't use all the spaces. Instead, instead we, we just use a part of it for stack because it implements first in, uh, sorry last in first out policy. So, so, um, so we only need to have a single variable named the top to mark okay what is the what is the where is the last element in in a stack where is the last element in the stack or in the array so that we know that everything before top is full of objects or elements that we want to store in this stack and uh, so every space after top is basically empty so top is, is the index of the last element. So you can think of stack as this. It's a combination of an array plus a top variable. Top marks the, uh, the index of the last element in the array. So everything before top is, is uh, so every space before top is filled up and everything after top is uh, left empty. Okay, so here let's say if we have such a if we have such a uh, a a, uh, a death structure, and if you are asked to insert a new element into the if if you are asked to to insert a new element into the uh, into this uh, stack, let's say we have an element eighteen to be inserted into the stack. So what do you need to do? Where are you going to put? Where are you going to put it? Five at index yes. five. You are going to put it over here, and at the same time, so you are going to increase top by one, right? You're going to move top to here because the last at the last element in the array is is not is now uh, this one. So so top should equal to five, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the uh, how you are going to insert an element into into a stack, and so. Now let's say if if you are asked to remove a, a, an element from the stack from the stack, which one are you going to remove? I mean, one, one fifteen, right? Sorry, one fifteen. One fifteen. Oh, one fifteen. No. Well, I mean, since this array isn't filled, you wouldn't need to remove one. But if you do need to remove one, it would, it, if the eighteen is already in it, then eighteen. If not, the nine. Yes, correct. So remember. That uh, so stack implements the last in first out policy. So among these four, so among these four values here, nine enters the, the stack in the last place. So if we if we if we are going to remove anything, it has to be this one. That's why I why, so here you, if you if you think of the stack as a single ended two. So whoever comes first, last is going to, to get out first. So uh, among all the existing uh, among the existing elements, nine comes uh, comes in last. So it's going to go out first. Make sense? Uh, yes. Okay. Cool. So it's like the queue system, you know, like you stand in line and then it goes no, around. No, queue, queue is this. Queue is first in, first out. So, so in queue we have to, or queue is basically a waiting list. You can take queue as okay. waiting list. Mm -hmm. So you cannot, if you let the last one who comes to the waiting list, go to see the doctor first. So everyone is going to die out, outside the, the waiting room. Okay. Right, so no uh -huh. one wants to get into the waiting room. They will, if they get into the waiting room first, they will, they will not be able to see the doctor forever. Okay. Okay. So. <clears throat> okay. So. Uh, uh, so this is. Uh, uh, so basically, the, the the insertion and deletion procedure of of stack. So first, the first function that we are going to learn is to how to check if a stack is empty or not. Let's say for now, if we got an empty stack, like over here, the stack is is basically empty. Where are we going? What is the value of top? What is, what is for a, for an empty stack? What is the value of top? You I'm sorry, say for an empty stack, you said. Sorry. 
You said it. What, what is the value of an uh, top of an empty stack? Yes. Um, it would be the index of the last element. But if it's empty, uh, I guess zero or yes. one in this case. Zero. Great. Zero. The thing is that if you put if you put top for empty for empty uh, stack, if if you put it at at one, if you put top at one, it will give you an illusion that the last element is here. It will give you an illusion that an, an element exists over here, but no, actually it's not. So we so we cannot for an empty uh, stack we cannot set it set top as one. Instead, we should set it as give the value zero. But in Java, since the index starts at zero, would it be negative one? Yes, correct. Okay. Okay. So. So in that, so if you understand that, then it's, it's very simple for us to check if a stack is empty or not. Basically, you are just going to check if top equals to zero. If top is zero, you will return true. You will return true, meaning that the the the, the stack is is truly empty. Otherwise, you, you simply return false. What if, what if the element in uh, s top is is zero? Wait, no, sorry, I, I I'm, I'm confused for a minute. The value in the in the in the stack is totally irrelevant to top. Remember, top is basically the index. So, if we have a zero over here, we have top as one, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't interfere with each other. Okay, so you would have to change the the pseudocode. Uh, like in Java, for example, like depending on what index top is at, you'd have to change the number in the first line, right? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, I see. So in Java, this would be if top equals to negative, negative one. one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And you would have to change it after every last element. What do you mean by every last element? So like if you were to add a new element, like let's say you would add new five new elements, Mm -hmm. The next top would be equal equals to four. Yes, okay. yes. Every time you insert, you do some, you do, you insert an element into the stack. You have to manipulate the the, the top. I see. I see. All right. Okay. Any other question? <laughs> okay. So and then. Uh, Let's look at the push function for stack. Actually, push is push is like like the insertion function. Okay, so here we are. The push function takes two parameters, s, uh, which is the stack. X is the new element to be inserted. So we already over here we already discussed we are what do we need to do. First, we need to put the new element uh, one position after top, and then uh, so we're going to increase top by one, right? So actually, the pseudocode over here is really simple. We first, what it does is that first it increases top, and then it assigns the new item to the top, which is pretty much like what we discussed over here. Uh, so, so for example, let's say we want to insert an element 17. First, uh, we need to increase top by one, so we move top to here, top equals five. And then uh, we're going to assign the new value, 17 over here. I see. So that's how. So that's so you don't have to manually change it every time. Right. Right. So, I mean, with every insertion, you have we have to maintain top. We have to manipulate top to make sure that top is the to make sure that top is the the uh, the last the index of the last element in the in the array. How many elements can an array hold? Can an array hold? Yes. I mean, uh, so it depends. Let's say, um, so so in Java, uh, I'm going to just just tell you this in Java. Okay, in Java, if you start your your if you say uh, if you execute your or if you have a Java code, you, you you want to execute it with Java. The command to to execute a certain code is like Java dot java file 
so x dot java file meaning whatever the java file that you, uh, you you wrote okay so by default i think by default java allocates 256 megabytes of of memory in the in the virtual machine okay so if you translate this to if you if you use all of this space as the, uh, for for an integer array so each how large is that integer in java How large is that integer in Java? Uh, a bit. A bit? No. A byte? No. Bytes? Is that where, is that where we're going? More, definitely more than more than a, a byte. It's four bytes for each for each integer. For mm -hmm. every integer, it is it is going to occupy four bytes. Okay. Every integer is going to occupy four bytes. And if you use this two fifty uh, six million divided by divide. Uh, six. This would be uh, divided four. So um, this will be forty. Uh, so, sorry, sixty-four megabytes. Um, Million sixty-four meg. So meg, one one m is equivalent to sixty. Is equal is equivalent to ten to uh, ten. Sorry, two to the power of twenty. Two to the power of twenty, and then so this is almost like twenty-four million. So, so it's a little bit larger than 24 million. So they, in Java, but if default, the maximum size of an array can be is just 24, uh, sorry, 64 million. Uh, so, but we rarely create a, 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 an array as large as that. Mm -hmm. Could you make the file of Java larger, larger than 256 megabytes? Yes, so you, there is, a com there is a, an option for the passing that is called uh, the, XMX. So by XMX, say here you follow something like say 2G. It means that you in XMX meaning the largest uh, heap space that you you allow the Java virtual machine to allocate to your to the program to run the program. So 2G mean meaning two gigabytes. You can specify any gigabytes or anything like gigabytes or megabytes. I so if you don't understand what I'm talking about, just go for just just Google Java minus X M X. You will be able to say it. Let me say Java. Yes, you will be able to say this. Java, see here. This in this example, it uses it uses uh, Java XMX, uh, uh, so one thousand twenty four M. It meaning uh, one th it, it means one thousand and twenty four uh, uh, megabytes. megabytes or one gigabyte. So this is equivalent to one gigabytes. A megabyte is ten to the six, right? I think. Megabytes is what? Wait, I think wait, is it ten to the ninth? No, ten to ten the six. Ten to the six. Ten to six. Uh, yeah. A little bit larger than ten to six. So um, a megabyte is as large as two to the power of twenty. So two to the power of ten, two to the power of ten is one thousand twenty four. So this is actually one one thousand twenty four uh, to the power of so one thousand. So we can take it as one thousand twenty four times one thousand twenty four. So it is a little bit larger than uh, one milli, but uh, or ten to this is a little bit larger than 10 to, the, 10 to, uh, 10 to 6. Wait, but is it 10 to 7th then? No, 10 but, to 6. So this is like 10 to the power of 3, times 10 to the power of 3, right? Just need to sum these three up after the, after the multiplication. Mm -hmm. Uh, two to twenty is uh sorry, like uh one million forty eight thousand five hundred seventy six. Yes. And then ten to the six would be ten million. No, ten to the six is one million. Yeah, one million. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, okay, so a little larger than ten to the six, and then a gigabyte would be a little larger than ten to the ninth. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. Uh... So uh, here uh, we just talk about the uh, the insertion, okay? So the insertion uh, or function for 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 stack. 
So here, let's say how many operations do we perform in order to insert a single element into the uh, into a stack? Two. Yes, two. Okay, so let me remove this. So just two operations, uh, two instructions. So uh, so the the thing is that no matter how large is S is the the, the stack. So we, we always only need two operations. And then if we just plot the time performance, if this is n, x, the x axis is n, which means that the size of the stack or the number of elements in the stack, and this is the time performance for time for us to insert a single element. For array, because if you remember that the, the time complexity of, or, of insertion in array is this, O n, right? So, so uh, for array, the time performance is going to be something like this. It grows, this is the array, okay? To insert an element into an array. The time increase linearly with the size of the array. But however, for stack, the time performance is going to be like this. It's, it's like a flight line. It's no matter how large is the array, the number of time, the, the amount of time required for insertion is just constant. It does not change, okay? So which one do, do, do you like more? Which one is better? Stack. Yes, stack. And so because the, uh, because the time complexity remains flat, we give the term, we use this O1 to denote constant complexity. For a rate is On. We, we always use O1 to, to denote uh, uh, the, the constant time complexity because one is totally irrelevant to N, to the, to the uh, size of the, of the input. So this is the best, this is the best com uh, complexity for any algorithm, not just insertion, not just the sorting, the best in general. There cannot be any algorithm that is faster than O1. Okay, so any questions is, so far? Is Q the same, O1? Yes. Okay. Because so in, in practice, how long would it take? Uh, so would it just be like one second or less We're using stack or Q? It's going to be much less than, uh, significant, significantly less than uh, one millisecond, uh, sorry, one second. You, you are not going to, to feel the time. I see. So that's really efficient. Yes. Okay. Any question? Okay. So um, next, uh, so uh, let's let's learn uh, um, let's learn the uh, uh, deletion function for stack. So over here. Uh, we say that if we want to delete an element from the stack, it has to be the one pointed by the top because this is the last element. So, so uh, and uh, also this is because uh, stack in implements the last in uh, first out policy. So it's always the one that is pointed by top that goes out that we're going to remove. So uh, here is, this is the pseudocode for, uh, of the remove function for stack. Pop basically means deletion. So um, what this function does is that first it, it checks if the stack is empty or not. If it's empty, it will just send out, send an error message saying that, okay, you are, you are doing something wrong. You cannot remove an item from an empty uh, uh, stack. Otherwise, what it does is that, so in this, in this example, what it does is that first it will decrease top by one. So top goes here, and then it will return as, as top plus one. Basically, it returns the element that is just, which, that is just removed. And the effect of, of uh, executing the, these two instructions are this, okay? So basically, the three is, also, is still over there, but uh, we just decrease the top by one. So this may, may sound like, may sound like, I mean, very weird, right? right? So, so 
our objective is to remove three, but three is still there after after we finish the 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 pop or addition function. Why is that? So what do you expect? It's a placeholder. Before? Yes, basically it's a placeholder. So, so the the thing is that okay. So here because we 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 set top as five. So basically it tells you. Uh, so so we only have five elements in the stack, and all the spaces after five are left empty. So next time if you, ins you want to insert an element, let's say twenty. You will just put twenty over here, and it overrides it overrides the 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 previous element that we want to delete. So it's like this is pretty much like we leave it there, but we ignore it, right? So, so it, it pretty much makes it next in line to get replaced the the three. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm so, actually a little bit lost on lines three and four. Like I don't understand. So, so if they uh, in line three and four, what we do is that if the stack is not empty, we will first decrease top by one. So here we have originally we have top as six, so it points to the element that we want to remove, right? So first, what it does is that it decreases top to five. So top goes here, point point to seventeen, and then it will return as as dot top plus one. Top plus one is six. It will returns. The element that we we want to remove. Okay, okay so this I'm is fine like with this. line three, but I I don't understand why line four. Because this function, so when you remove something, you, you, you at least you want to not want to want to know okay we, what what value has been removed. Three. So, yes, this this as as top plus one here you are basically re returning three, which is the element that we just removed. But and you haven't removed it yet. We have to re remove it, it yet, but it's like it's like we 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 leave we still leave it there, but we we ignore it. We assume that it has been removed. It has been re removed. I see because top is right before it. Everything after yes. top is irrelevant. It's a, it's yes. a placeholder. Okay. Yes. So see. this is like someone. In your life, let's say if you have a classmate or or a colleague that you you don't really like, you don't want to work with that person or talk with that person, so you can remove it from your social network by let let that people still stay alive, but you never you totally ignore that person, and and so this is what we do over here. You have an analogy for every situation. I mean, I have to. It's, it's, it's kind of like abstract. So if you if we have an, an analogy, it will it will help with the understanding, I guess. Yeah, it definitely does help. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, the uh, uh, the remove function of stack, and actually here. Uh, we you need to uh, be aware that in practice, in, in the computer science world, we use this logic very often. For example, we all want to uh, say so. Uh, here is a, a basically a, the, in your in your operating system, a directory or a folder is just a, an array or a list, an array of so an array of of files, file A, file B. It's just an array of files that exist in your that exist under this folder, and the structure for that is that for every directory, it has a link. It has a link to the files. File A, B, C, D. Okay. So sometimes when you so when you want to remove a file, you, you click you go to this file, click remove. What it does is that okay, the basically only re cut. The, the remove the, the, the link from the directory to this file. So next time when you go to the directory, this file does not show in the directory, but this file itself still resides on your hard drive. Okay? Yeah. 
Got it? Yes. So do you know what is the implication for that? What does it imply for you? It implies that if you want to discard an old laptop or desktop, and say if 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 the, uh, if on the on the hard drive you got some uh, say sensitive files, you cannot just go to uh, just delete that file. No. So if you if you if you just delete those sensitive files by by clicking remove or throw into garbage in your in your operating system, what it does is that it just cuts this link, but the file still exists. If someone collects your hard drive. And so that person with, with some to wait, it, it is able to recover this structure so that it knows the sensitive information on your, on your hard drive. Okay, so do you know what you should do to prevent it from happening? How can you protect your, your, your sensitive data when you are throwing away a, a desktop or a hard drive? Uh, it's just physically break your hard drive. Yes, that's one way. What Encrypt else? Encrypt it. Encrypt it. Format it. Reformat is the same thing. Reformat is like cut all the links. Format I mean, even, even if you format it, even if you format it, they can still get the information out. Yes. It, format is, is like cutting all the links. It's, it's, uh, it, you can take, take it as a, a very quick way to cut all the links between the folders and the, and the, uh, the, the, the actual files. So here, if you come to our example, do you know how to, how to protect your personal information? Suppose three is the sensitive data on your on your hard drive. After clicking remove, you oh, replace do, it. You do an insertion so that the 20, the new value 20 is going to override the original sensitive value three. So three does not it does not exist on your hard drive anymore. Right? So what you should do is that after you click remove, you keep downloading some uh, uh, some 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 uh, uh, data that is not sensitive let's say uh, movies or or let's say uh, video games keep downloading to to get your hard drive full so that every free space is is occupied then the mix uh, in this way you make sure that your sensitive your sensitive data has been overwritten make sense does that actually work with files? Like if you just fill up your hard drive and you yes. delete something and fill it up? Okay. Yes. I didn't know that. Okay. So this is how, how to uh, protect yourself from, from leaking data. And uh, uh, so, and here, uh, what I want to say again, uh, let's, let's talk about the, the complexity of, of deletion. Okay. So no, let's just jump over here. Okay. So to summarize, in stack, we learn three functions uh, to check if the, so the first function is empty and then push is to insert and pop is to remove. Okay, so all these three functions are of O1 complexity. They're pretty fast. Okay, so, so, uh, so, so far we just finished stack. Any question regarding stack? Um, yeah, someone actually asked a question in chat that I'm curious about. So it says, if you print the array, three won't show up. Here, if you print the array? Yeah, if you print it, will three show up? Like, like, like here without 20? Well, I, I didn't ask the question. I don't, I don't know. What do you meant? So if you print the array, let's say if you, if you print the array, yes, it, the three uh, pr print out the array. The three still shows up, but until you until is, you replace it. Yes, but the thing is that because this is a stack, so in a stack, so top marks the, the top is the index of the last element. So if you are printing out, if you don't print out the array, you print out the stack. It will terminate at here, 
So three will never show. So you, you'll print like from index zero to, in, uh, in, uh, to S top? Yes. Okay. Okay, so, so any other question regarding stack? Okay, if now then I'm going to move on to uh, cube. So, so, so uh, if you remember, the difference between stack and cube is that stack is like a single entity cube, whereas cube is like the uh, the uh, the waiting list, uh, which implements the first in first out policy. So, so in cube. In, we uh, Q is basically uh, Q is basically an array with uh, two more values. Uh, the first one is called head, and the, the second one is called tail. So head is the uh, head is the index of the first element in the in the in the waiting room or in the waiting list in the queue in the array. Whereas a tail points to the next available position. The first available position. So, so, uh, so in this way, you will be able to know what is the first value, and so, so, and also, so with tail, what you can know, what you can know is that if, if we got a new element to insert, you know where to to put it. So let's let's use this as an example. So suppose here, uh, you got an, a a queue like this. And if I ask you to remove one element from the queue, which one are you going to remove? Does one through six have anything in it? No, nothing. And fifteen. So, so yes. So you will. So you will. Uh, you will say you remove the value fifteen because half points to the first element in the uh, in the in the array, and. So Q implements a first in first out policy. So so fifteen should should be removed first. And so similarly, if you got a, a new element to insert into this Q, let's say you got 20, 20 to insert. So you got twenty to insert in, into this Q. So we are going to place twenty. Or where are you going to put twenty? If you don't want it to be like the first removed, would it be 12, the index 12? Yes, yes. So, because tail points to the next available place, position, okay? So, so you, you should put it as a tail. So, so we always remove the element that is pointed by head and insert to the place pointed by tail. This is the, the uh, what do we do with tail. So then, Let's look at the uh, the inQ function, which which helps us to do the insertion. So, um, okay, so <clears throat> so from from the previous example, we know that okay, we always want to insert the new element into the the in, into the index tail. So um, so here, this in in in, uh, in the first line of the inQ function, we're just assign x to the to to index tail. So here, if we have a value, say 17, we want to insert, uh, want to insert, uh, we want to insert value 17 into the queue, we'll put it over here. Okay, so this is what we do with the first line. And then let's look at the next. If tail equals to the length of the, uh, the, the array, we have tail equal to one, otherwise we add one to tail. So to understand that, let's, let me give you an example. Suppose here uh, today, uh, uh, some some people just go to a uh, a, a waiting room, uh, go to see the doctor, and this is the waiting room of the doctor's office. So here we so so far we got uh, so four person coming, okay, four 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 patients come, A B C D. They follow in different they follow in order one two three four. So here, say uh, now, say the doctor is available. So who is going to say the doctor first? A. Yes, A. Whoever comes first should go go to see the doctor first. So A is gone. So A goes to see the doctor. And next, B is gone. B goes to see the doctor. Okay. So then the first, the two chairs are are empty, and this chair is also empty. So let's say now we got a new patient, E, come, coming. Where should we let E sit? 
And four plus one. Yes, we should, we should let E sit over here, okay? So then let's say, now if we got a new patient F coming, so where should we let, should we let F sit? Should we say, should we let F sit somewhere or should we let, let F wait outside of the door? Sit in one. Sit at one, yes. We should put F over here. This is what we do in real life because, because here we got some, some of the front spaces free, okay? So we want to reuse them. So basically we reuse the space in a circular way. And so this is the head and this is the tail. So, so next time when they, so even though F sits before CDE, so because we keep, keep track of the head, so we know that C, so head points to, to three, head points to three. So next time when the doctor is, is free, so we, we will let C go and then D. Right. In this way, we are able to reuse the. Uh, we are able to recycle the place, the position that uh, that are freed after some some elements are uh, are removed. Mm -hmm. This is what we do in real life. Similar over here. Okay. So here, uh, originally we have tail as uh, as twelve, which is the end of the array, and and then we just insert a new element over here. So. We, next time we want we after that we will put tail over here so that if we got a new element let's say we got a new element three coming in three can sit over here instead of waiting out outside of the array pretty much like the example in the doctor's waiting room right you got me I guess makes sense. <laughs> Cool. So, so next, let's look at, uh, so, so, so this is why we have this line. If tail equals to the length of the ring, meaning that tail is at the end, we should set tail as one so that we can recycle the, the front space. Otherwise, we just increase tail by one. So for example, after we insert three, we just move tail to the second place so that if we got a new element, let's say five, so five is going to sit over here. Make sense? Um, does stack use tail and head as well? Sorry? Does stack use tail and head as well? Does that what? Uh, the, the previous uh, function that you were teaching, stack. Yes. Does does that use like, uh, does that use head and tail as well? No, it just has a top because okay. Because say, say it, 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 it is like a single ended tube. We only need to know where does the where 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 is the position of the last element? So so all the space before it is going to be occupied. All the space after that is going to be free. Okay, I see. Yes. Okay. So here, if we look at the the number of instructions that we perform in insertion, is there any for loop? No. Is there any loop? No, there is no function called either. So the time complexity is still O1, linear, oh, sorry, uh, constant. So no matter how long is the, the, the queue, so, so to insert a, a single element into the array, it just takes constant time. And so this is the, uh, the deletion function for queue is called DQ. So, so here, uh, if, this is the, uh, if, if this is the queue, then which element are we going to remove? Or let's come back here. Which element are we going to remove? 15. Yes, the one pointed by head because head is the index of the first element. So, so here we're going to remove 15 and then increase head by one, right? So, and then again, if, if say all these elements are gone and we have head over here, we had a head over here and if this element is gone too, so where should we put head? Would it be a three? Yes, we, we, we will also recycle uh, it because, because we know that after 17, then uh, it should be this, this element, okay? So this is the, the DQ function first. We're going to assign the, the, the element in the place of head 
into X. So basically X tells you which element is going to be removed. And then uh, we, we manipulate head. And finally, we, we just return X, return the element that has been removed. So similar, similar to stack, we don't physically remove the element, we just ignore it. Okay, so uh, this is the DQ function. And again, the time complexity is also O1. So it's also linear. So any question with Q? So do you just increase Q head uh, one slot till the end? And then once it's at the end, place it at the start? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Any question regarding uh, Q? No? Okay, so uh, then this is stack and Q. And so uh, here, when you are going to take uh, your op operating system class, uh, CSIT 345, Mostly likely, your operating system class teacher, instructor is going to ask you to implement a CPU scheduling algorithm named first come, first serve. Okay, if you, if you say first come, first serve, what can you relate it to? Q. Yes, because Q implements first in, first out. So it's, it's basically the same thing. So, so Q is used by our op, uh, uh, in our, uh, by our operating system to scheduling to schedule the, the jobs for our CPU, and uh, so so you will need to implement Q, Q in CSIT three forty five again. So better, uh, uh, so 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 master this skill when we are learning Q instead of like delaying it to to your oper to your operating system class. Okay. So uh, this is Q, and uh, next we're going to learn uh, the third data structure named the linked list. Okay, so uh, before that, because uh, today I'm not going to, to make a stop because uh, I think we, I can probably finish within 30 minutes. And so there is no need to, to, to stop. And uh, so, but, bef but I don't want to just, uh, uh, so, 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 keep talking for two hours and then uh, some of you may fall asleep. So uh, to make it a little bit fun, uh, let's say uh, now, uh, so ask me any question you have. Uh, you can basically ask any question. It does not have to be related to the course. Ask any question in general is, is fine. So I'm going to answer maybe two questions from you. So anything that you are interested in, anything about me, about the department or about the school or even about life, say it. So at the start in our first lecture, you said that the two most important courses in the computer science is data structures and algorithms. And what was the other one? Database. Why are those two the most important? So database, so, so here we, when we're learning data structures, and we're learning that we're talking about that that structures and algorithms. Data structures you can take data structures as a a small warehouse or a just your your basement. So we can you can store some something that you you want to use frequently in your life, okay? And uh, algorithms is like the operations over the data. Database is like a big warehouse. So if you got a, a huge amount of data and you, you definitely need to store it over here rather than a small data structure. Data structure is used to, to, to store a small amount of data. Database is used to organize a huge amount of data. So if you master these two courses, basically you are able to handle data in your life with programs. And that's everywhere. I mean, so at, at, this, at this stage of, of the world, data is everywhere. So that, that is going to be your job. Uh, so your main job as a either programmer or a IT manager.
Okay. So a different question. Uh, I, I just finished one. So uh, is there another question? Come on. So some of my previous students asked me uh, a lot of a lot of questions that are are, are not related to, to this course or to this major. So professor. Uh huh. Where are you from? Where like, where, where, from? where where am I from? So uh, can can you guess? Um, maybe I'm guessing maybe China. Japan. Maybe Japan. Uh -huh. I say China. Oh. What? Mainland yeah. China. I say uh, South I, Korea. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, South I have Korea. never visited Japan, even though uh, that's uh, so that uh, I really want to uh, visit that that country. Yes, I'm from China, and so if you go to our department um, web page, you can probably find. Uh, let, me, let me present you from my my. No, you can I, find I your didn't. university. Yes, if you look at, at least our department, I'm not sure about the whole university, but at least from our <laughs> department, uh, most of the, the faculty who, who recently joined the department are from China, mainland China. And I think around 50% of the full time faculty in our department now are, are, are Chinese. <laughs> hey, so, Professor, I have a, just a random question. Um, sure. So, just wondering, do you? Do you know martial arts? Because I know that that in China a long time ago they used to they used to do that as like a you know like religion type thing. They will teach um, kids kung fu and martial arts and stuff. So I was just wondering oh. if you learned. <laughs> no, no. I think so, that's very stereotypical. It's not. It is I mean, not. So so like when I was really young, when I was really young, uh, uh, so. Stand up so that can see. I'm, I'm really slim. I'm really skinny. So uh, this this was this is true. Uh, I mean, I, I've always been skinny. So 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 when when I was young, I want to learn some kung fu so that it's, so I can if I have a fight with uh, with someone, yes, at least uh, it will give me some some advantage. But um, I mean, so kung fu. You can take kung fu as as something as an art instead of a sport. It's not a sport. It's an art. It only exists in movies. It, it looks cool. It, it's basically a way to to fight in a more beautiful way in, in art in, in the movies. But uh, so so if you if you talk about sport, if you I'm not sure. Uh, so in, in, in the U.S. there's some. There's some boxing uh, they, they, they do um, they do karate so, and boxing. Yeah, karate, karate. I don't know how to say that, but there's something like MMA. Yeah, MMA. Yeah, mixed some, martial some arts. really strong people. Okay, no one. So if you got a skinny person like me, even though that person knows knows kung fu, that person is going to be killed by a regular MMA person. So, <laughs> uh, so yes, so it's basically an art and. Uh, uh, I I spent I spent one year learn, trying to learn kung fu from someone, and I found it's it's basically a waste of money. <laughs> <laughs> I learned uh, Taekwondo, which is uh, South Korean martial arts, for a year. Um, professor, sure. I have a question. Um, how was like the how was your undergrad like now now that you're a professor? How was your undergrad different from like our diff like our undergrad here? Like how's the CS education in China versus here in the US? Okay, uh, that's a very good question. So, uh, so <clears throat> here, uh, there's, so uh, I, so let, let me introduce myself. I, I did my uh, undergraduate in China in the major of software engineering. So uh, software engineering in China. So, uh, so uh, my university is ranked rank is around 20, 20, 20, 25, 20 or 25th in China. It's pretty much like the, the Berkeley in the US. So it's, it's a very good university. Uh, so um, over China and let, let me, let's just talk about um, uh, China and the US. Uh, so first let's talk about the difference. The difference is that it's going to be, it's very cheap over there. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the tuition is around $1,000 per year. Per year. And uh, 
uh, we uh, so so the university provides some dorms. Uh, the dorm is like uh, my, my dorm is is not very fancy, but uh, say so it, it's it has around let's say how large it is like three hundred foot square or four hundred foot squares and uh, square foot and then uh, so so uh, four people so over there it's it's kind of crowded but it's not too bad. Um, that's how much is the rent for a whole year the dorm. 500 bucks 500 bucks no. yeah is it more than the tuition it's definitely more than tuition but no it's no? 200 oh my year. god yes it's 200 really? per year yes really no, it's it's the same it it remains the same for 20 years no increase at all so uh so but some people may say that uh so in china people the the, the income is less so let's say my, my parents now they are retired uh, their income they're just I, I come from a, a very ordinary family a, a lower or mid, middle class lower between lower or middle class i think now it's kind of like lower and my parents now after when they're uh, so so when i was in college they make around this is like 10 percent in total this is like 10 percent of their income annual income so in the U.S., I guess it's it's really expensive. So in my in in my uh, I remember in my college, in my class, our class has thirty students. Uh, our class has thirty students. Only one or two of them take student need a student loan. Only two or three, uh, only maybe two, one or two, uh, need student loan. So so, but in the U.S., I guess probably at least fifty percent of the students would need student loan, and the. The ratio between the tuition and and the dorm expense versus the the annual the, the average household income I think is also over thirty percent. So uh, it's, it's really cheap over there. Uh, so but the so the good thing is cheap, but the uh, the bad thing is that in the U.S. you have better quality of education. Here, the professors are of definitely better. Uh, so better professors. So. You may say, okay, here some professors are cannot teach. I'm not not talking about how how do they teach. I'm talking about their knowledge. So to be in order to be a professor in the U.S., you have to be really good. So so here Montclair, I think it's ranked, it's it's ranking maybe it's maybe around 200 in the U.S. Right? 170. I checked. 170. 170. Okay, in the U.S. If I go back to China, I can easily find a university, a top 20 university, to be a professor over there. So, so now you see the difference. Okay, so here you got better professors in terms of the knowledge. Also, the thing is that you get some more classes, some more class size. So over here, let's say when, when, uh, in, in a that structure class, so we only have around 30 students, right? So when I took my undergraduate years, how many students are there in my class, an average course? 100. 100. 180. So you cannot ask a question. You are not allowed to ask a question because if if just like if each one each student asks a question, then the class is over. So instead, you you are not permitted. You are almost almost never permitted to to ask your questions. And so 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 that's why I say here you got a little bit better education. But I have to admit that in the U.S., professors are good at more. Are better at research but not at teaching uh, so that's my feeling and uh, so this is the difference but there's something in common the similarity between them is that the students are lost like uh, for me yes I, I was also lost in my undergraduate years um, so uh, I remember that in the first year uh, I, I started really hard so in the first year, we, uh, we learned C and C++ and some, some uh, calculus class and some other stuff. So, um, so uh, I, 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 I ranked around top, top 1% or 2% in my university. <clears throat> so, but the, the thing is that at the end of the, of, of the academic year, I found that I, I couldn't even write a whole program by myself, just a whole function, a, a, whole, a whole Java class or a whole C++ class. Plus plus, uh, C plus plus class by myself. I couldn't. I couldn't write. I was I was lost. And 
So, so I, the bad thing is that I don't know if I don't even know where should I start. I read the textbook, but the tech, the from the tech, the textbook, I know what is the syntax, what are the grammars for a certain language, but it does not teach me how to how to program, how to be a, be a good programmer. So, uh, so that's why I say in the second and third year, I, I was totally lost. I was so uh, I didn't I didn't work I didn't study hard. I just I, I only make sure that uh, for every class I, I just get at least the B. That's that's my my bottom line. So so I, I skipped a lot of classes, and uh, uh, but I don't regret because even even if I went to those classes, I I wouldn't be able to learn much. Um, so. I had quite some fun, but uh, I, I, I must say that I'm lost. I was lost. So that's why that uh, when I went, uh, so our college is like most of the students, around 95% 95, 95 of the students finish in four years. So in the, in the end of my third year, I was like, where am I going after graduation? Can I get a good job? Yes, I can get a good job because I, I, I come from a, a well reputated university, but am I confident in the job market? No, I, I'm not at all. So as the, at that time, I decided that that I want to pursue for the education. I want to learn more. So because uh, I don't think I'm well prepared. So that's why I I decided to apply for PhD in the U.S. At that time, I thought that U.S. has the best uh, education. So I want to experience the best education and. I, so the th so so then uh, and and so fortunately I, I was able to get a, PhD, a couple of PhD, PhD offers from the US and then come here for free because uh, I got my uh, the, the, the scholarship which covered my tuition and my my uh, living expenses um, went to Stevens right yes I did that in Stevens and uh, so uh, I don't even need Need to borrow any money for that. My, my, so I remember that my parents gave me four thousand dollars or five thousand dollars when I left my country. Uh, like, and then that's that's the, the investment on my PhD <laughs> plus four uh, five years. Um, I was really fortunate because I find myself I find myself in my PhD lives. I originally I was like, if this is CS. I, at the end of my undergraduate years, I was like really far away from. It. But um, in the in the uh, after I finished my PhD, I was like I'm even though I'm not in the center of the of of the CS world, at least I'm I belong to it. I love it. So over here, I see similar things. So um, a lot of students are lost, and uh, so so. Um, but say. I don't blame you because this is the, the, the at, at least in the computer science world, if you want to learn program, you cannot learn program from, learn, learn how to program, you cannot learn how to program from books, not from lectures either. You, you have to learn, learn programming from someone. Someone has to teach you hand, hand by hand, but no one is, 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 can afford to have experienced a good programmer teach you. Say how much does a good good pro, uh, good program make an hour at around a hundred dollars per hour? Okay, can you afford a hundred dollars per hour? No, no, not so. So so that's why let's say our class has thirty students. I, I'm not able to teach you programming hand by hand, face to face. Uh, so. Uh, uh, I think that's the, the similarity and, and the difficulty that we face, uh, no matter where it is, as long as we're in this subject. How long have you been teaching? Uh, let me say, a little bit over four years. Oh, I thought, I thought you were older. I thought you were like, okay, so you're like not even 30. <laughs> you want to see my head? No, I'm, 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 I'm 30, I'm almost 32. Okay, so you're, you're still really young. Yeah, I know that you take like a lot of pride in your teaching because last class I asked, uh, so some students are, I'm in a group and some students are asking me about attendance. And I know that I asked you if you took attendance and you said that your teaching is good enough that you deserve uh, for more students to be in your class. Mm -hmm. And I also know that you have like a really good rate my professor rating. So I know you take like a lot of pride in your teaching. Uh, thank you. 
Yes, I spend my time uh, on, on teaching. I, I prepare it. So, uh, 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 so I mean, the, I think a good way to tell if the, the a professor is, is well prepared or not is like if that professor reads a book or or slides. I I I, I hate professor. I, I I shouldn't say that, but I, at least I don't like professors who do that. So that's why when I was doing teaching, I write a lot of I give a lot of handwritings. So. Uh, if 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 so, everyone can read the book. If so, so if if a professor can only read the book, why the students just pay the tuition to the professor, but not the students just stay stay home and buy a book and read it by himself? So uh, so um, so I think my task over here, my objective in this from this class is something like over here. So I think some of you or maybe most of you are like here, like what I was in my undergraduate years. And then my objective is to track from, in this course, I want to track you a little bit closer to the to, to this subject, to, to feel the beauty of it, to be confident in that, so that you'll be able to, to get a job in this field and you will enjoy your career. Do you so, recommend Stevens? I was thinking of applying there for grad school. If you are rich, <laughs> right? I got into Stevens and I even got a scholarship, but then I still had to pay like I think nearly thirty k a year. No, that's that's more than that. So when I did my PhD at Stevens, I think in two thousand eleven, I heard the undergraduate tuition rate is forty k a year, just the tuition. Yeah. Now this it should be something it's like 50. like 50, 60. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, most PhD programs they pay for uh, for STEM, they pay for everything, so it doesn't really matter. Yes. yes, if you are able to get a PhD offer, then yes, it doesn't matter. But it's hard. It's really hard. You have to be really com competitive. I'm not sure if you know GRE. Yes, of course. <laughs> so that's uh, the exam. Yes. Uh, so the GRE now it is like each each. Each um, uh, say say verbal and math is like ho, ho, so. What is the total grade for 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 verbal and math? Three forty, right? Three forty. So one seventy each, right? Mm, yeah, exactly. And then an, plus an plus analytical plus writing as well. Yes, I'm a I'm I was a foreigner, so in order to 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 be able to admit it to to get a PhD offer, I worked really hard in, in my GRE because my GPA was was not good at all. My GPA was in my undergraduate years. My GPA was like three point two. So, so if you want to apply for 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 uh, PhD, at least you should have usually should have three point five GPA. But I, my was only three point two, so I, I need to let my let myself stand out in GRE. So I'm not sure if you you know how hard it is. I, as a foreigner, I got one sixty three plus one seventy. So this is around top two percent worldwide. So it's really it's it's really hard because basically you you want to study and want want someone else to pay for your study, so you have to be really good. It's hard. Okay, so uh, I just answered a couple of questions from you. Okay, so in the in the future, uh, if 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 the time allows, I will also uh, take some questions from you and answer it for you because I I live I think we have. We have similar experiences, and uh, so I want to share it with you and let you know that um, you are not alone. That we all face, I, at least I faced this difficulty uh, when I was at your age. But fortunately, I was able to 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 survive it and uh, and reach the current stage of uh, in, in, stay in the current state uh, current stage of, of my life, which I really enjoy. Hope, hopefully, we can also do that. Okay, so let's come back to the uh, to the lecture. And uh, so um, the third depth structure is called the linked list. So previously we all talked about arrays. We, we all talked about arrays. So the problem, with, so so uh, and when we learn stack and queue, stack and queue, the thing is that we only use a part of the space in the array. Let's say we only use this part and get this part uh, occupied, right? We let we leave them as as a buffer space, but the problem is that so um, so you can take it in, take it 
it in this way. If we think about house, again, we think about house. Let's say in the beginning, I, uh, when, you are get, uh, when you are married, uh, so you want to buy a house, but you want to leave some buffer space for the future. So your, so your wife or you, you may say, okay, let's buy a five bedroom, apart, uh, maybe six bedroom house. Even though currently we only need one bedroom, let's leave this buffer space. So that if we got our parents visit us, they can stay at home. If we got two or three babies, they have their space. But the problem is that you are basically wasting a lot of space and you are paying a, a huge amount of, of the property tax, right? Yes. So this is the, the, prob the problem with stack and queue. So the buffer space, we, we leave buffer space, but the buffer space, if we don't use the, them, it's basically a waste of the space. And so to, 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 to resolve the problem, what we can do in real life is this. So first, so, so let's say you say, okay, let's do not buy a house with, with six bedroom. Let's just buy a one bedroom apartment first. Okay, and you stay over here. Next time, say when, when you got your par parents, you say, let's say you, 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 when you got a friend to visit you, you buy a house. Let's say you, your parents want to visit you. You buy another apartment for, for, for your parents and you let your parents stay in that, in that apartment. So, but you, so, so, and also, you know, okay, from your apartment, what, so this is apartment A, apartment one, apartment B. So, from apartment, apartment one, you create a link or to apartment two. This is like, you know how to drive to the second apartment. From the second, so after that, let's say if uh, you got another one, your, your sister coming to visit you, you buy another apartment for your sister. So, and then from, from your, your, so from your partner side, you know where does your, where is the third apartment? So it's like, you basically create a link uh, which is the address between uh, so 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 between this this uh, or, or route between this uh, these apartments between consecutive apartments, and so in this way, next time if you got someone to visit you, you can easily buy another apartment and create a link to to that one. So so the the advantage of this way of of say doing insertion and and managing data and doing insertion and deletion in this way is that you are not wasting any space. You're only asking for a certain space, only if when you, when you really need that space. There is no buffer space that is wasted. Got it? Yes. Any question? I'm not sure if I'm clear with this. Ask your question if you have. So it's like uh, the data and then the reference to yes the next. yes yeah yes okay so in this way so the difference between stack stack and queue and this way of data management is that there is no buffer space and now we are not playing with arrays we're not doing we are not creating we're not organizing data in the arrays anymore we're organizing data in different nodes we call them different nodes and we create a link between these nodes. Okay, so and this way, this way of managing data, we call it. The, the, uh, so if we if we if we allocate data in this that uh, in this data structure, we call this data structure linked list. It's basically it's basically a list of nodes that are are, are linked by the links that that are connected by the links. Got it. Okay, so <clears throat> in the linked list uh, data structure, so every node has two, every node like this one, every node has two elements. The first one is the data, and the second one is the link to the next data. Okay, so similarly, we got this. Okay, so this is the, 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 the data that we're going to store in every node, in every node. And also for holding the list, we only need to know the head. We only need to know where is the head or where is the first node, okay? The head is basically the address of the first node. If, as long as we know the first node 
for, by, following, by following the links, we are able to go through every node in this list. Okay, so you, you can take the link to list as something like you buy an apartment on street A, on street B, street C, street D, and, and then from, from, from the first apartment, you know how to go to the second one. From the second one, you know how to go to the third one. So that if, as long as you know the address of the first one, you will be able to go, go through every apartment that you have. Is that clear? Yeah, that's clear. Okay, so um, and there, there are different types of, of linked list. So the, the most simple one is like this. We call it a single linked list because from every node, you only know that we only, at every node, we only keep track of the, the link to the next node, to, to, to the node after it. Uh, so, but similarly, we can have double linked list. So that is like this, okay, every node has, has two links. So it has the, the data field and also has two, has two other fields. The, the first field is the link to the node after it. And also it keeps track of the node before it, we call it previous, okay? So, so every node keeps track of three uh, in, uh, pieces of, of information, the data, then the, the next node and the previous node. So this is like a double link list because from every node we can either go before or, or go after it. Go to the left or from every node we can either go to the left or go to the right. So, so the, this structure, we, we call this structure double link the list. And uh, so, so some people even like use the, so connect the, the first, uh, the first node to the last node, and create basically they, they use the nodes in a circular way, like what we did in a, in a in a queue stru queue that structure. But uh, we are not going to touch the circular uh, linked list in our in our course. So instead, we in our lecture we only focus on double linked list. This is the mostly widely used uh, that structure. Oh, sorry. This is the most widely. This is the linked list that is mostly widely used. So, uh, so uh, double linked list. In double linked list, every node keeps all uh, every node every node keeps track of three pieces of information, which are data, previous. Oh, so for the data, we give the name called key, previous, and the next. So previous and the next are basically the link to the to the node before and after it, and then a key is the the value that we store in this node. We store in this node, and for holding the list, for holding the list, we don't need to keep track of all the nodes. We instead we just need to keep track of the head node, or the first node. Head is basically the first node. So if we if we, as long as we know where is the first node, we are able to by following by following the links, we are able to go through every node in this that structure. Any question? Yeah. Um. So just to clarify, it's kind of like a bunch of arrays linked together. No, they're not arrays at all. We're not playing with arrays for arrays. For array is like a house. Every room is just close, is, is next to each other. So you've you got a big house and you've got all the rooms in, in, uh, inside this house. So, but linked list is like this. So they are scattered. The, 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 the values that we store are scattered at different places. We, so, we, so we are able to find so we're able to, add, uh, to, to find the location of them by following the links. I see. And so uh, like a uh, previous is like it holds uh, like for 16, for example, the previous for that will hold nine and then the next will hold four or does it just hold the no, link? The previous okay. is, is the address of the previous node. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. It's the address of the previous node. And next is the address of the, of the node after it. I see us. Okay. 
I know this is kind of like abstract. So if you have any question, just ask it. Okay, so you can you can take array or stack or link dot or, or queue as a big house with the uh, the rooms next to each other. So in, in array, so if you in a, in a house, if you are at room one, by going to to the to the next room, you you know that you you know that room room two is just next to room one, and, and room three is just next to to room uh, room two. So because the spaces are consecutive. But with linked list, the space are not consecutive at, at all. So, this, uh, so we, we basically store these values or these nodes at different locations. And then we use the link to, 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 uh, to uh, we follow the link to find each of them. Okay, so, uh, so for the whole linked list, we only need to keep track of the first node we call it head. And if the linked list is empty, if the linked list linked list is empty, meaning that there is no, no node in the whole linked list, then we have head as nil. So do you know, do you know what is nil in Java? How to represent nil in Java? It is n u l l. Now. No. Yes. Yeah. Now represents nothing empty okay so uh so uh this is the uh the, the uh so the linked list and so uh this is what i just talked talk about before so every node every node has three elements the first one is the key that stores the actual value like for this node the key is basically nine for this node this key is 16. And a, po a, po a pointer, you can take, so if you happen to learn anything like C or C++, you can take a pointer as address. So it's, it's an address of the, of, of the node after it. And the previous is the, the address of the node before it, before the current node. So for, for, for at this node, the previous is basically the address of this one. And so, so, and the next is the address of this node. So the address is basically where it is stored in your physical memory. Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it just means no, right? Yes. Well, what, what, is, what is the abbreviation, uh, abbreviation stand for? Sorry? What does the no abbreviation stand for? Abbreviation stand for nothing, does not exist. Oh. Not, not exist. Or empty, so uh, okay. So uh, here, I think I had better stop the presentation from my from my uh, uh, iPad Pro and then come back to my uh, laptop. The laptop is really slow, so I'm running some programs, so uh, it will take a while for me to share my screen with you. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Eclipse. No, this is uh, yes. PyCharm. So let me open up Eclipse. So this is the uh, this is Eclipse, and so here I, I'm going to show you uh, what I mean. Okay, so this is the this is the scaling code that I provide you for you to do your homework for. Uh, it's, it's really slow. And so this is the definition of a listed node. Uh, so so as you can see that each each listed node has three pieces of uh, three uh, member variables, which are the key. It's like what kind of value does this node store? 
uh, previous and the next, the half of them are just list node. <coughs> I'm sorry. You can take take them as the the address of the node before and after it. This is the same as what we we learned in the lecture. <coughs> and uh, sorry, over here uh, is the um, link the list data structure. So I also give you the definition of the link the list data structure. So each link the list only maintains the head, which is a uh, whose tab is a list node. So if if when we just create an empty link the list. Its head is me is now, meaning that it does not exist. Okay, so uh, when you are doing your homework for, uh, so for to to implement ink the list, you should keep this file named uh, list node on touch. So uh, you don't need to do any change in this file. Instead, just go to the uh, link the list file, and here you you need to link implement three functions that we talk about, that we're going to talk about in the next 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so we are search, insert, and delete. Okay, so uh, so so here I just want to show you uh, that our the scaling code is, uh, say, compatible with the, uh, with the pseudo code that we, 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 uh, we have in the, in the lecture. So then I'm going to come back and so, um, <clears throat> okay, so the first function that we're going to, to talk about is search. Okay, so here, um, let's say we got, we got, yeah, we got the infinite, that, and let's say I, want, I give you a parameter called, uh, I give you a value, say I want to search for the value for in the link list. And what for for the whole link list, you, you only know the half. Okay, you only know the half, which is this node, which is this node. And so what are you going to how can you search for the value four in the link list? I don't even know what you Sorry? Can I say it again? It, it was a bit hard to hear you before. Oh, sorry. So suppose that you uh, you got uh, say a value of four. You got a linked list like this, and you know the head. You know the head, which is the first node in the linked list. And then um, so you you are asked to search for the value of four in the in this linked list. How are you going to perform the search? Well, I don't know the syntax for it, but I, I'm assuming it would be something like x next, and then after that use the the next after that. Okay, cool. Yes. So basically, the, 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 the step is that you are, first you are going to look, look at this node. And if this node does not, the, the key of this node does not match four, you go to the next node. And if it does not match it, you go to the next node until you find a match or until you reach the end of the, of the length list. Right? Correct. Okay. So this is the search function uh, for length list. L is a length list, and K is the value that we want to search for. First, we have X equal to the head, X as the head. So if we follow this example, head is over here. So initially we, we put X over here, and the condition is that, well, head is not new. If head is new, it means that if head, if head is new, it, it means that you are, you are at this place, which is already, out of the linked list, you reach the end of the of the linked list, so you should stop. So while X is not new, meaning that while you are not at the end of the linked list, or and the, the key of X does not match K. So so here we got X dot key as nine. So X X dot nine is not is not does not match. Uh, so so the key at X does not match the value that we want to search for. So what you do is that you, you have x equal to x next. x equal to next is, is this node. So you basically move x to here. So x is pretty much like the, the iterator over the nodes. So we, we, iterate, we, we iterate over over the nodes from the first one until the last one, or until we find a match. So, um, so, so then we, we, we perform this operation. And then again, we, we check if X is not is new or not, and if X dot key match the K. 
So here X obviously X is not new. This node exists. And X dot key does not match four. So here we got a value 14 does not match. So then we uh so we 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 execute the next statement. We got x equal uh, we, we we assign x dot max to x. So basically we move x to here. And right over here we say okay, uh, we can we check if this con if this condition is, is set, still satisfies. X is not uh, so here x is not a new and x dot dot key equals four. So this is going to be false. Okay, so uh, then you, we terminate the, 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 the value and we return x. Basically, the search function is going to return the node that includes the key that we want to search for. Make sense? Yes. 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 Okay, so, so the search complexity is is O N because if we got N nodes, in the worst case, we, we need to go through every node in the linked list. So the search complexity is O N. So uh, this is the, the search function for linked list. And the next, let's look at the insertion. And deletion. Okay. So when we insert a, a new when we insert a new node into the linked list, we always put it in, we always insert it in the beginning. We always put it in the beginning, okay? So it's not a pan. It's this is like we insert in the beginning, the opposite, the opposite of a pan. So, uh, and this is the uh, this is the pseudo code for us to 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 insert in the beginning of a linked list. So suppose here uh, we got a new node x, which a new node x which stores the value here, twenty five. New and new, so so uh, so basically this node uh, it does not have any node before it and any node after, it. and so it's uh, so the, the value that we store in this new node is twenty five. Okay, so what it does is that okay for so if we want to insert insert it into the beginning of this node, uh, sorry in, in, into the beginning of this linked list. These are the operations. First, we have x dot max equal to l dot head. The head of the linked list is here. So what we do is that so we basically modify the link at x, the next link at x, and assign it to here. Okay, assign assign it to this node, to the to the first node in the in, in the linked list. And then is is l dot head is not new. If, so here. L dot head is not new. We have x dot head dot previous equal to x. So x dot head is here. The previous field of this node is here. So we are going to assign a new value, which is x. So this is like let's create a create a new value for for it. Okay. And next we are going to do this. L dot head equal to x. So it's like we are saying that we are crossing this L dot head. We are saying that the head of this new linked list is here. And we, we, we also, we set x dot previous equals to new. And even though it's, all, it's already new, we, we, we make sure it's also new. So after we perform this operation, uh, we basically get a linked list like this, where the, the, new node, the node x is inserted into the beginning of the original one, and it becomes the new head of the, of the linked list. Any question? So do you oh, always? Do you... Go ahead. No, I, I don't see anything. No, no, someone else did. OK. <clears throat> but then he if you, have any... if you have a question, just ask me. Do you always insert it in the first location, in the first yes. place? Okay. Yes. This is because for a linked list, what we only know is the head, the first one. Okay. If you want to know, if you want to insert at the end of the linked list, we have to 
visit all the nodes, follow, follow the link, follow the link, visit all the nodes and reach the end and then do a, a pant. So, so that, in that case, the, the insertion complexity would be O-N because you have to visit all the nodes in the linked list. But if we just insert it into the beginning of the linked link list, as you can see here, the number of operations that we perform is at most of five, so which is irrelevant to the number of nodes in the linked list. So the, if we insert it into the beginning, the, the insertion complexity will be O-1. So that's why we always go for this way insert it in the beginning. Make sense? Yes. Any other question? No? Okay, so uh, then the next one, deletion, is the most beautiful uh, function for linked list. Uh, so I want to uh, say say explained over here okay and so here uh we uh, the input is is a linked list and x x x is a certain node in the linked list that we want to remove so suppose we have x here and this is the node that we want to remove from the linked list okay let's check what it does if x dot previous is not new x dot here x dot previous is not new if this is x dot previous this is x dot previous points to this node, right? So it's not new. What it does is that x dot previous dot next equals to x dot next. This basically this is x dot previous. X previous is basically this node, the previous node. So with here, what, what it does is that it assigns x dot next to x dot previous dot next. So so what it does is this. It it. It, it overrides this link, it let it point to the node after x. So this is x dot next. Okay, so it, is, so it, it, it modifies the next field of, of x dot previous to, to x dot next. So this is what we, we do over here. And then let's go to the other, uh, the other uh, so, so if, if if x dot next is not new, x dot next is not new. It's, it's over here. It's, it's, it's not empty. So we have x dot next dot previous equals to x dot previous. So basically, x dot next is this node. So we are going to assign the previous field of this node with a new value. So with a new new link, we are going to give the new link like this. Okay. So what it does is this, okay? So look, this is the result. This is at the end of the deletion. What we do is that we do not physically remove the node X. Instead, so we, 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 we just modify the link in the uh, linked list, in the linked list. So that let's say if we, if we perform a, a, a visit from the beginning to the end of the linked list, from the head, we go to this node. By following this link, we go to this node, we go to this node, we go to this node, okay? From the end, if we want to perform a visit to the beginning, okay? From the last node, we use its previous field to go to this node, and then go to this node, go to this node. This is like the X, the node X still exists in, in the physical memory, but we just ex exclude, it, exclude it from the linked list. Oh, you're abandoning the the node yes we are right. just discarding uh, we're just removing it from the, the linked list but we, we do not physically remove it right so i mean if you if you if it's hard for you to understand this okay let me give you my example so when i was a always i uh i uh, uh i have some problem with my mom so uh so if i if i spend let's say two weeks with her we will definitely have a big quarrel or or so or or uh, a very intense intensive argument. So in that case, if this is me, if if this is me, and this is my mom, and this is my dad. Okay. So we if if this is three of us, 
and usually we talk with each other. But if if I just in case that I have a very intensive argument with with my mom, what I do is that we just me and my dad will just ignore my mom. We are going to go across her and talk with each other. So it's like so this so this is pretty much pretty much what we do in the linked list. We just go across the node that we want to remove. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So here you can see that the number of operations that we want to that we perform in the deletion function of linked list is also just five. So no matter how long is the linked list, so only five operations for us to, to delete a certain node. So the delete time complexity is also O1. Okay. So yes, this is the pretty much what I want to introduce with linked list. Any question? No? Okay, I'm okay. So I say one chat, I'm okay. And what else? Uh so okay, if no if no question, then um let me briefly summarize what we learned today. So in today we basically learned three data structures stack, queue, and linked list. So the first two are based on array. We call them array based. Okay, so these three data structures compared with array, the biggest advantage of them is that they provide O1 time complexity for insertion and deletion versus array, which whose insertion and deletion time complexity is O N. So, but unlike stack in, in linked list, in link in linked list, we always insert into the beginning. And but we can delete anywhere. We can delete an anywhere. We, we are free to delete any any node from the linked list. Whereas uh, in stack and queue, we can only insert at the end, delete the last one. But for Q, we, we can only, we also we insert at the end, and delete the first one. So in terms of the freedom of deletion, uh, linked list provides the best of freedom. You, you don't have to delete either the last one or, or the, the first one. You are free to delete any of them. So this is a summarization of the three data structures that we learned today, okay? So if no more question, then that's the end of our lecture for today. And after this one, you will have your home four, uh, which I don't expect it will take a lot of time from you. I actually have one question. Sure. So, uh, could you explain line five a little? So x dot next dot previous equal to x dot previous. This is x dot next. We basically modify the previous field of next. It's like we we give the new link to the previous node after to, to the to the node before x. It's like originally this link is from this this node to x. Now we modify it to the node before x, so that we go across x. That clear? Yeah, so the x previous is equal to x next. Wait, but isn't x next previous just x? I'm confused. Uh, you, so what it should be is that x dot next dot previous. If we don't perform the deletion, equal to next. It's like the, the, the person after, so the person after you and before you is you, is you. I'm saying. Who is the person? Who is the per? I'm saying, if you go one place backward and go forward, it is your position, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what we do. 
So, but here, what it does is that it says, okay, the, so by doing this line, it's like saying that the person after you, so if you go, so, the, so, your, so, so it's, it's hard to explain by words, but I'm going to, just going to try to, to, to draw the picture like this. It's, it's like we modify the link. We, 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 we remove this link and we give it a new link. What about before. X though? Aren't you skipping X? Yes, it's like we just skip X. If we go from back and from the back end to the front end, we skip X. I see. Okay. okay. Any other question? No, but could I see you after class? Uh, I mean, not today. Cause I, I uh, so so I need to take care of my daughter. Okay, okay. Okay, so but uh, just just drop me drop me an email. If I cannot explain it well in the emails, I will like uh, so we can discuss via Zoom um, sometime tomorrow. Yeah, professor. Just mm -hmm. um, one question about the homework. Um, I was this, I was the student who uh, accidentally when I handed it in, something really weird happened, and mm -hmm. then the um, the source file was gone when I handed mm -hmm. in the first homework. Mm -hmm. it just, I don't know what happened to it, but I redid the code, and uh, but the assignment is is locked. So I was okay. just wondering if I can get those eighty points since sure. that weird. That weird sure. crap happened. So send me a, a separate email so okay. that uh, with your with your code. Okay. Uh, I will let the GA regrade your code. All right. Thank you. Thank you very and much. There is no penalty. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. Thank good you, night, professor. everyone. Good night, thank you, professor. professor. Have a good thank night. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank professor. You. Have a good night. Thank you.